folks, in this video, I'll be guiding you the correct way to use the Abyss Refractometer. Before you start to do anything, please ensure you have your personal protective equipment on you, meaning nitrile gloves, lab coat, cover shoes, and socks that covers and protects your ankles. And of course, your safety goggles which I have already put on. Okay, now we are ready. Action! This is the Abyss Refractometer you will see in the lab. It is jointed to a counter that is a digital thermometer. The system is also hyphenated to a chiller to cool the prism. And before you conduct any analysis, you have to turn on the machines. We need the cooling device to lower the temperature at the prism which is very hot due to the high voltage light rays. Excessive vaporization might occur and that's something we wish to prevent. As you know, the refractometer measures the refractive index and is therefore temperature dependent. Here, switch on the main system. The power switch is on the right side of the thermometer. Note the reading on the display panel. You should monitor this value. And over here, you notice the light bulb is turned on, the ray of light emerging out. And over here as well, the second bulb. And there are several components of this refractometer that you should be familiar with in order to operate. Now first, the color compensation knob. Next, the measurement knob. Both knobs will be adjusted using your right hand. On the left, there is a prism switch. Open and close the switch. It is super old school, but it's so robust. This is the eyepiece where you will look into later. Notice a green circle? That's exactly what you will witness. Watch me. My left hand rotate the knob and release the prism. Now precautions, never scrub the surface with any objects. No scrubs. Not even Kim wipe. Tissue towels, paper towels during the cleaning as they're very abrasive. So you cannot use any of these to clean the prism. I will now demonstrate how to clean the surface. Follow my protocol carefully. You will need cotton balls. Take some cotton wool and roll into a ball. Take this dry cotton ball and lightly wipe the surface of the prism. Spray some ethanol into the cotton ball. Now dab gently on the prism. Now careful cleaning is critical to our continual use of these instruments and the major antagonists are dust and grit. So any particle that scratches the prism glass is detrimental. Next, take your sample from the vial. Note the temperature again. And withdraw the sample using a glass pipette. Place several drops onto the sample prism. If you don't use enough sample, it will be difficult to see the mark. Too much sample will cause splashing and potentially contaminate the area. Close the sample prism firmly. And rotate the prism switch to lock it in place. Now look into the eyepiece. Turn the color compensation knob to achromatize the boundary line and stop turning when the boundary line becomes neither reddish or bluish. Since reddish edge appears just above the boundary line while bluish edge appears just below it, the midpoint when neither reddish edge nor bluish edge appears indicates that the color is completely compensated. At this point, Turn the measurement knob to set the boundary line to the intersection of the crosshairs. For the lower scale view, this is where you can record the refractive index reading. The upper scale is for reading refractive index, while the lower scale is for the bricks percent. Read off the scale and take down the reading you need. That's it! After that, don't forget to clean up for the next user. Open the prism. Roll a cotton ball with ethanol spray.
dab, dab it onto the sample prism, the alcohol will dry off in a while and close the prism. Turn off the power switches and turn off the main power supply. Thank you very much for watching. Have a nice day.